In this lesson, we're going to be looking at vocalization two of task 1A, la la la. Before we get started, just want to say a few things about vocalization one. Since doing the video, we've had lots and lots of feedback on the website. Um, one in particular that stands out, some really fantastic feedback. If you've not, if you're not a member of the course yet, please go by and have, have a look because it's there's some really valuable feedback even after doing the videos and looking for all the screenshots if you scroll right to the bottom of the page some of the users are, are putting in their inputs and it's all valuable it's all fantastic stuff one in particular stands out and it's all based on vocalization one and that was from a user called Jason Boyd now he wrote me a little message just saying fantastic lesson but I think it's it should be slightly off the beat slightly before the beat so okay let's have a little look at this so we've gone back into vocalization one and I've dragged everything slightly before the beat and it was absolutely right it gives it such a rigid feel you know kind of pushing against that the beat ever so slightly um, whereas my piece before sounded very mechanical just taking it off the beat ever so slightly and just a little bit before has made it so much better and you can see here and if I zoom in ever so slightly more you can see that the, the, the amount that I've taken off the beat is, is nothing really. Each one of these squares is a, is a semi-quaver. So you've literally got less, it's, it's less than a 32, it's, it's at 64 really. Um, so it's, it's a tiny amount, but, but try it with your piece and I think you'll be surprised. And remember, we have to listen for these sorts of things because you will lose marks if you don't get that feel. There's a whole bunch of marks to be lost if your piece sounds very mechanical. So if you're playing your parts in, it, you know, you're know you not going to have a problem with this being off the beat ever slightly because you, you should play it exactly how it sounds. Whereas if you're typing it in, this is where you've got to stay you've got to spend a lot more attention making sure you get it right. So thanks for that feedback, keep it coming, lots of discussion happening, so please feel free to put your input to the post as well and I'll always try these things out. Okay, vocalization two, a very small part. Once again, I'm always very conscious about doing vocal parts in MIDI. It's very difficult to get the times absolutely right, but they do have to be stylistically appropriate. They do have to sit well in the mix along with everything else. So for this part, once again, I've used a synth. So I've come to my synthesizer section as my, my initial preset, and I've gone into the leads again, pretty much the same way as I did with vocalization one. This time I found a nice one under Scream Lead, which is a frequency modulator synth, the EFM1. So if you double click on that, and actually I haven't changed too much of, of what's going on in here, but as you can see it's a very simple envelope, it's a very simple synthesizer to use. So if you are going to tweak around with the sound, and you should, just do it in little little fragments. I don't think you'll find this one very hard to, to use at all. I have had to manipulate the sound, however but more to do with the way that the whole instrument is set up. The limiter and the EQ, for my liking, weren't set up very well. What was happening with the EQ is they were using this boost signal in order to get more volume out of the, out of the sound itself. Um, and for my money, I just I don't like that. I, I don't think you should be using EQ to get more volume. I think you should be using EQ for exactly what it is, and that's for attenuating or, or boosting or or detracting from individual frequencies themselves. There is a place for it, of course, but in this particular instance, I found that I was able to get the boost in signal by using their pre-built-in limiter that they'd already adjusted. And literally, they had the, the gain set down quite low rather than at this zero dB. So just by bringing the gain up and losing losing this kind of boost here on the overall signal it gave me the same effect but for my money it's just a, a little bit better to control then I've gone about setting the EQ up I've dropped the 500 to make it a slightly cleaner sound I've boosted these frequencies here to give it just a bit more of a harder edge and I've lost all of the lower frequencies because we just didn't need them one thing I've done with the EQ is I've turned the analyzer on now I generally do this anyway because I like to see what my frequency is doing. Let's just turn these three off. Hopefully I remember which ones they were. And let's just play the sound that I've got. And you'll see that, that if you're not used to using the analyzer, there's a lot of good information that, that can come from this. So if I just solo this and press play, and you can see all the frequencies, it tells me exactly where they are and exactly kind of what I can be messing around with. 
first thing it's telling me is there's not much here. So by losing, by turning this on, by turning this on, you just lose all those kind of hummy sounds that might have been in there that weren't really audible, but they could have dirtied up your mix a little bit. Now, was it this one? Yeah, then, then I put the 500 in. And you can see I'm cutting into these frequencies ever so slightly. And then I think it was this one. And then just putting a bit of edge to it at the top. Okay, so this is the sound that I've come up with. The way I'm hearing it in terms of panning, let me click, click the actual one. Oh, God, I didn't mess that up. No, that's fine. Dude. So the way I'm hearing it in panning is it's slightly over to the right. Uh, initially, I put it over to 27. But I just felt that that was slightly too wide. But you're going to want to experiment with how far to take this over. And once again, it's it's down to you to judge if it is in the right or if it's in the left or if it's in the center and how much to move it. I did something quite clever on this track, or I, I thought it was clever. And that was I played this solo instrument along with this one. And I then tried to match up the volume and the panning at the same time. So if I do that now and just show you what I did. <laughs> And you can hear that actually they're, they're very close in, in terms of sound and timbre and all, and all the rest of it um, and the level of the mix and where it is in the pan. So that's another little technique that you can use if you play the track that you're working on along with the track. It's quite easy to find the, the actual pitches. Same as vocalization one and using the, the advice that I was giving on, on the page. And it's something I, I tend to do anyway, but for some reason I, I didn't do it last time. And I've pulled these first three notes ever so slightly off of the grid just to give it that kind of very rigid feel and if you have a look and I'll just solo the track so you can just see that it is ever so slightly before the beat and if I zoom out a little bit more hopefully it should make it a bit clearer <laughs> Okay, I've left these as they are, and to my ears that, that's how it should sound, but you should play around with it. If you think it's slightly before the beat, then by all means do that. Let me just show you my one in the mix. And also by overlapping it, once again, we are getting a bit of portamento, which is quite nice, quite a slow slide to the note, rather than going straight into it. This is pretty much all I have to say about this track. It wasn't a particularly complex one to set up, so it shouldn't take you too long. It doesn't happen very much. As you can see from my layout here, it happens at the end of the intro, and it happens over here on the bridge, just the last one. It doesn't happen in this bridge here which I was expecting it to but it didn't and it's only written on the score in in this posi position here once again as I say in all my videos just remember the key signature so you are and anytime you see an F is actually an F sharp anytime you see a G it's actually a G sharp there are lots of G's in this part and there's lots of F's I'm not sure that there's a C or sorry a C sharp but those are the three sharps to look out for. So whenever you see a C, it's actually a C sharp. Whenever you see an F, it's an F sharp. Whenever you see a G, it's a G sharp. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> 